The eagle has landed. Eagles. Eagles. The eagle has landed. <laughs> Right, all I know is that you followed you to Cyprus in case it all went pear-shaped with Jim. Oh, yeah, right. So he, he didn't tell you the bit about abandoning me for gorgeous Georges. He said he wanted to marry me. I thought he was the one. You ah. abandoned me. You chose a waiter over your best friend. Fit. Beautiful. I, did you... Roy, did you bring it back here? Oh, don't worry, I steam cleaned your mattress. When you bought the house back, I knew you'd be away for a while. Yeah, because I was in Cyprus. I was lonely and, and feeling vulnerable and... and Roy, I was in fear of my life. What can I say? It was love at first sight. I wasn't thinking straight. I was thinking very, very gay. So, where is he now? Oh, did it run out? Yeah, with my wallet, my fake Rolex and the... Um, Oh, come on, Roy. Not my signed photograph of Madonna. Seriously? Is nothing sacred? I'm sorry, Aggie. I've let you down. You know what? Good riddance. Because all men are bastards. Oh, it didn't go well with Bill then. I, I don't want to talk about it. I've got PTSD. And James? Hey, what happens in Cyprus stays in Cyprus. Just saying. You deserve better, Aggie. I know. We all do. Uh... I think we should just sign off men for good. Single ladies club. I'm in. What about me? Oh, you can be honorary member. Member. <laughs> 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 well, as Madonna once said, power is being told that you're not loved and then not being destroyed by it. Mmm, yeah, I'll drink to that. To the Carsley Single Lady Society. A life without men. Life, life without, without men. Bastard. Uh, Come on, ladies. My party. Sorry, Jim. What fish? I can't really hear you. Yeah, no, it looks like she's definitely back. I don't want to be your go-between. Just call her, James, please. James? Je Hello, girls. That's right. Before, I haven't had it before yet. It mm. lives. Oh. Good morning. Do you know, much as I love you guys, I could really do with a little bit of time on my own right no, now. No, Ags, you're hurting. You need our support. It's single ladies together, remember? Do you not have a child? Mmm, go camp. And you're here because... Oh, because it's lush and your TV's bigger than mine. I can't face London now, Aggie. My heart is broken. It's shattered into tiny little pieces, so I'm taking a couple of days off work. Do you know what? Oh, I really, I really need to do quite a lot of thinking. Oh. Mrs. Razor, welcome home. Mr. Lacey, not with you. No. Oh, oh, what? Go on. Oh. What the heck? See? You need us to protect you. Settle down, settle down, settle down. Mrs. Raisin has nothing further to say and trust you will respect her privacy at this very difficult time. Thank you very much, thank you. What do you mean difficult time? It's all a difficult time. Really? No one gave a damn about what I did in London. Oh, that's the charm and the curse of village life. But how am I going to get rid of them? Why are Jen we dealing with it? For now? You'll just have to front it out. Oh. The Village Lady Society meeting today. You are joking. Oh, they're my family. <sighs> I'm that kin of my own family. Come on. We've got a concert to plan, and you have such great ideas. Right, well, here's one for nothing. Let's plan not to do it. You really are in a bad thing. You? Have you heard anything from James? Oh, just the odd text about the garden, building maintenance, and stuff like that. So nothing, nothing about, about me or... James is not the man I thought he was. All the more reason for you to come today. Show those gossips that you're over him.
Mrs. Blocksby was telling me about your new club. Yes, but you have to be single, Beryl. Mr. Boggle and I are on a break. He never liked Sir John. Oh, her budgie. Came on from somewhere he was nowhere to be seen. Bernard said he'd flown away. But I found blue feathers down the waste disposal. He did not. Evil old goat. Banished him to his sisters in Morton. Well, I always knew he was a bit strange, but I never saw him as a budgie killer. You can never truly trust them, huh? They're all barbarians at heart. I couldn't agree more. Boggle, you're in. Well, if everyone's got tea, I'd like to um, open the meeting, please. Well, I think that concludes our business. It's ours. Hi, Gemma. Don't think you were coming. Oh, neither did I. Yes, Roy made me. All that does is leave me to say many thanks to Mrs. Boggle for agreeing to organise our annual concert and to Mrs. Darry for agreeing to do the teas. <laughs> now we just need some performers. I can play the recorder as usual. Gemma? I could do my Lady Gaga if you're desperate. I, um, I, I could read some Palm Airs. Oh, that's lovely, Lisa. Who's that? Oh, you know, uh, oh, oh, I wish I'd looked after my teeth. I know that. I mean, who's that? Oh, uh, yeah, Lisa Friendly. She moved to Carlsley around Christmas time. Bit beige, but basically harmless. What about you, Mrs. Raisin? Surely our local celebrity must have some party piece up her sleeve? Oh, I'm afraid, Mrs. Durry, I don't have any talent. Neither do they. Doesn't stop them. OK, I think we'll leave it there, ladies. Uh, there are forms by the door for anyone who'd like to sign up. Thanks so much. Um, let me introduce you to Agatha. Agatha, um, I don't think you've met Deirdre Dowry. She's taken over Bellevue Pharmacy in Evesham. Yes, our paths have crossed. Oh, sorry, I had no idea you were Carsley's famous well crafted sleuth. Not with those roots. Huh. All right. Pardon my French now, Mrs. Vicker, but that woman is a total bitch. Oh, look at this mess! It's all the stress. I have let myself go. Oh, come on, it just needs a little attention. Oh, actually, somebody recommended a marvellous new stylist in Evesham. I've got his card somewhere. Uh, yep, Johnny Shawpart. There you go. I've heard he's overrated, overpriced. He thinks he's God's gift. That's every man I've ever met. Yeah, well, I don't care if he's a serial killer if he can sort out this mess. Here for the special? Is this Studio JS? No, that's further down the high street. This is Eva Evesham. But I can squeeze you in for a cut and collar. No one does a purple rinse like Eve. Do you know, I'm not quite sure I'm there yet. There comes a time when you have to embrace your age, Mrs. Reed, and not hide from it. Sir Charles, you should know. Well, they're for Agatha, actually. Well, she's she's not in. Well, perhaps you can take them for her. Nice tan. Hard to avoid. Cyprus is bloody hot. You were in Cyprus. Didn't Aggie tell you? No, no, she didn't. the reason I'm seeing Johnny at three. Oh, yeah, I can see why you needed an emergency appointment, yeah. Johnny? Johnny, your three o'clock's here. Uh, skin tone gives like a much richer colour, Agatha. It's a cool name, by the way. Is it? Thank you. And I'm thinking something more dramatic, star-wise. Yeah, to be honest, I could do with a change. There's a woman on the phone. Say she's left loads of messages. I said no interruptions. She says it's important. I can start the call if you like. My client is paying for a consultation with a style director. You really think she'd be happy with Shampoo Boy? No, Johnny. If I ask you to do something, you do it. You understand? Yes, Johnny, sorry. Looks like he can run before he can walk, that one. It's all part of the mentoring process. And there's no way that I was going to let him anywhere near your gorgeous locks. <laughs> 
doing this anymore. But you've got free shampoos and a Himalayan body scrub stacking up. I can't go back in there. Johnny's a monster. You just really wind him up. He's a pussycat, really. You know what he said to me this morning? No. Back in the day, I'd be Evesham's village idiot. Truth hurts, though, Gaz. Call Senator Tyrone if you're interested. I'm not going anywhere. I don't know how much longer I can bear it, Johnny. Pete cares more about his trains than he does about me. You deserve so much more, Maggie. He never even looks at me, let alone, you know. It's like I don't exist. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, it's my pleasure. You are a wonderful, special woman, Maggie. Hmm. Ready? Yes. <gasps> See, you look ten years younger. Well, I don't really, but thanks. Why do you keep putting yourself down? <laughs> you are absolutely stunning. No, Angelina Jolie's stunning. I'm just kind of okay-ish in a sort of older woman kind of way. Has someone hurt you recently, Agatha? Keeping secrets is all part of the job. You can tell me yours over dinner if you like. Blueberry Diva. Deliciously Moorish. I don't, but thanks for asking. Is that your boss? Mm hmm. Seems very popular with the ladies. The whole of Evesham is trying to get in his pants. But he's only interested in old slappers. The richer, the better. Not his biggest fan, then? No. He is. I'm guessing that's his car. Yeah, he doesn't deserve it. He treats people. Roy Silver. Do you ever want to talk or maybe? Are you one of the single ladies or are you not? What about you and Mr. Hare? If I hadn't have arrived when I did. Listen, we made a pact. I'm not about to break it. Well, neither am I. Never said Lord Toffee Nose was in Cyprus. Didn't I? Not as bad as this one. I caught him outside the salon flirting with the shampoo boy. Right, he's not just a shampoo boy, he also does blow dries. And so what if we've been tempted, we haven't succumbed? Not yet. Make sure it's ready this time. Yes, Rob. See you soon. You were back. 
Your hair looks, um, unusual. Thank you. Get me here. Give us a hug. I've missed you. Just wanted to say how sorry I am about you and James. Mm. I shouldn't have encouraged you to follow him. Well, I shouldn't have pushed you and Gemma together. Not really very good at this love thing, you and I, are we? Oh, Wilkes. It's on my case 24-7. It's driving me insane. This is the same Wilkes whose work ethic involved eating burgers and jumping out of bushes? He's been on an advanced policing course. Oh. Sounds like you need a good old moan over a good old bottle of Merlot. What about tonight? Yeah, I'd love to. Actually, I forgot I'm out tonight, but um, I'll call you. OK. So, Harry, you could stuff a mattress. I'm going to do you an organic decaf chai latte and I'll smash you an avocado if you're peckish. Mm. <sighs> Poach me an egg. I mean, obviously, it looked great when you did it, but clearly, I do not have the time or the skills for this old natural look. Well, natural can be sexy, especially on you. Right, let's get you shampooed and make you beautiful again. <laughs> And Charlie will be with you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to impress him. No, no, no. Johnny, you just want to look your best. Boy, you, don't you? <sighs> Oof. Who are you trying to kiss? Don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> Need a hand, Agatha. Uh, yes, please. My neighbours are always kicking off. Mm. Do you know, I think they get a buzz out of it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, <laughs> you are so tense. You're, uh, not married then? Hmm, I was, but we were just kids. Yeah, split up not long after. All very amicable. Mm. How about you? Well, uh, let's just say that I've not been quite as lucky in love as I have been in business. So we're both free agents now? That's one gunk po beef, one chicken chow mein. Crispy seaweed. Crispy seaweed. Capital ribs. Uh, capital ribs. Sarah's getting us a Chinese. I'm having pork balls, obviously. What do you fancy, Aggie? Actually, I'm just heading out. Meeting my aunt. <laughs> yes, she is a bit of a stickler for punctuality, so, uh... <gasps> better get going. <laughs> Plus the Samot leech, uh, plus a cocktail. I've got a bottle of Napoleon brandy back in mine, if you fancy a little. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I don't think my legs are fine. Lisa! Lisa! Hey, it's Agatha! Oh, a bit weird. Do you know her? No, no, I've never seen her before in life. Oh. Let's go. Where's the exit? Agatha, 
Agatha, Agatha, wake up. Wake up, Agatha. Oh, yes. How can I get you to come back to mine? I can't. Hmm? I can't because I can't. There's a, a man is coming to trim my thatch first thing in the morning, so I've, I've got to, yeah. Wow, you forgot something. <laughs> you look so beautiful in this light. Do you know that? Yeah. Hmm. Uh. I, 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 think, mm -hmm. I think there's a... I think there might be a storm coming tonight. I mean, coming back here, late, drunk, treating this place like a hotel. It is actually my house. You lied to us, Aggie. The trust is broken. We want the truth now, otherwise you're grounded. For a month. All right. It wasn't my aunt. Oh, bloody hypocrite. OK, so I fancied him. But I don't know. Oh, yeah, I look like it and all. Listen, I was just trying to humour him so that he didn't suspect. Suspect what? I thought there was something a bit weird going on. Lisa Friendly was at the pub and she saw him and she couldn't get away fast enough. He claimed that he didn't know who she was, which I didn't believe. And then I get home and I find this at the door. Johnny Shawpart is dangerous. Get out before it's too late. And you think this came from Lisa? Yeah, well, who, who else is it going to be from? Gaz said something about Johnny targeting old slappers. Sorry, mature women, especially those who are loaded. Sorry. If Lisa's so scared, why doesn't she contact the police? Because Johnny is a keeper of secrets. What if she had something that he was holding against her? Blackmail. Blackmail. And Lisa might not be his only victim. I feel another investigation coming on. I'm going to talk to Lisa. I think she's obviously hiding something. Gemma. You can go to the salon, undercover. Oh, no, I can't, because Kira's at guy camp, isn't it? Oh, Kira. Well, I'll go. If the women of this parish are in danger, it's my duty to protect them. Perfect. So, if Johnny Stoppart is up to something, the single ladies... And Sarah. And Sarah are not going to let him get away with it. What's it about? The Ladies' Society concert. Agatha, I'd offer you tea, but we're about to go out. Oh, it won't take long. I, um... just... <laughs> wanted to check that you were OK. Why wouldn't I be? Last night. Who's that? Oh, I was rushing to the ladies. I should never eat... Prawns, they go right through me. So, uh. You didn't leave that note. Uh, thanks for dropping by, Agatha. I I I'll see you at rehearsal. <laughs> is it itchy, though, or is it smelly? Oh, it's both. Right, okay. Yeah. Now there's a cream for that, don't worry. Yeah, no, I've had that. Absolutely. OK. Oh, I'd like an appointment with Johnny Shawpot, please. Oh, you and every other sex-starved woman living in the Cotswolds. Call you back, Mum. He's fully booked for the next six weeks, I'm afraid. Uh, I'll wait for a cancellation. No, he's not in until later. I'll come back then. Okay. Just so you know, I'm not sex-starved. I'm happily married to Vicar's wife with a very adventurous love life. Praise the Lord. Hi, Bill. They had a break-in last night. Bloody kids are like cockroaches, aren't they? Getting anywhere. I'll see you then. I don't know what came over me. 
Don't worry, you're only picking up what the Bible says. Go forth and multiply. Jez will be proud. Well, at least he didn't mention role play. That was on the tip of my tongue. That's Johnny's car. What's he doing here? He's old enough to be his mother. Jez was with an old woman when we first met. Taught him everything he knows. I'm rather grateful, really. Jez is quite the man. Mm. Yes, he is. Now he's showing his true colours. Gotcha. That's not good. Uh -oh. We should probably... Yeah. Look at that. That's bad. Her name's Maggie. She's in an unhappy marriage. Johnny was all over her at the salon. So what do we do now? What do we do? We flush him out. Are the single ladies still accepting members? Oh, really? Not you as well. Jez is threatening to cancel our holiday. It was supposed to be our second bloody honeymoon. I know. You have been planning it for ages. Well, the bishop was appalled by all the buckets in the church, and so Jez says he can't in all conscience go anywhere until we raise money for the repairs. Leave it with me. I owe you after today. Where are you going? See you at the meeting. Sarah deserves her holiday. And how amazing would it be if we could all help get her there? But the concert, as it stands, does not really raise the amount of funds that we need. So, with my old PR hat on, may I suggest a bit of a rebrand? A burlesque extravaganza. I've always fancied myself in a bask. I couldn't. Rob wouldn't let me. What's it got to do with Rob? This is not about him. This is for us. It is not for anyone else. Dress it up all you like. It's just glorified stripping. I guess that's where you're wrong. It's much more than that. This is about feeling confident in your own skin. About feeling powerful, beautiful. And it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're fat or thin or... I'm not sure. Sarah, think about the WI ladies with their calendars. That wasn't degrading. I bet they all had their doubts. It was inspiring. It was liberating. I have contacts who can help with merchandising. Think about it. Mugs, tea towels, T-shirts. With the right marketing, we could get the money to save this church roof. This could be massive. Yeah, I'm up for it. And so am I, uh, as long as it's tastefully done. Well, we'll be getting my resignation in the morning, Mrs. Moxby. Nice one, Aggie. Don't forget your broomstick on the way out. Well, let's have a show of hands. All those in favour? Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I, I, I wish I could, but I, oh, I can't. Johnny's agreed to meet me at the White Hart for lunch. <sighs> Game on. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Hear you loud and clear. Over. Target is on his way. Over. Target has arrived. Looking like an absolute whopper. Over. Oh! Oh! Hi! Oh my God! What happened? Joyrider ran into me. Face hit the windscreen. Car's a complete write-off. But. I'm fine now. Are you sure? Yeah, it's just a few bruises. Well, I just wanted to say I am sorry for getting so drunk. Ah, no need. It's just a shame we didn't have that nightcap. Well, it gives us an opportunity to get to know each other a little. Like, for example, what are you doing here? You mean you don't strike me as a country bumpkin type? I was working too hard. Sold the Bristol Salon for a small fortune. Escaped to Evesham for the country dream. Well, you're looking good on it. Partly down to these. Vitamins from LA. Bellevue Pharmacy managed to track him down for me. 
Trouble is, I'm so chilled now. I'm restless. I need a new challenge. <laughs> yes, I know the feeling. Thinking about starting a salon in London. Mayfair, Bond Street. Joe, you know, I would love to go back. I've made such a mess of things here. We could go together. Why not? What? Well, I know how to run a successful salon. You know how to run a high-end PR campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, I have been looking for an investment. And I've been looking for a woman to invest in. There is something you should know before this goes any further. I am in a relationship, but it's complicated. Things hadn't been going well, and then James went away, and uh, I, well, I um, slept with his best friend, Charles. Just the one. Oh, it's OK, Agatha, we all made mistakes. Yeah, but what you don't understand is that Charles is a psychopath. He's pathologically jealous. He refuses to let me go, and James is going to come back any day now, and... I'm here now. Oh, but I don't want you to get all involved. I'm already involved. Tell me all about it. We can deal with it together. But first, let's get a bottle. <sighs> Agatha! Did you get my flowers? Charles! You're a violent psycho, jealous, and can't bear to see me with another man. I really like you, Agatha, but that's going too far. It's role play, Charles. Just go with it. I'll explain later. Oh! Uh, Johnny. This is Charles. Oh, just you calm down. I don't want another one of your jealous episodes. So you're stalking her now? <sighs> yes, uh, Johnny is my hairdresser who did such a beautiful job in my hair that I just wanted to take him out to lunch to thank him. Oh, and you expect me to believe that, do you? You lying little tart. You, oh. You're coming... Oh. Oh. No, please, hands off me! Get your hands off her. Listen, if I were you, I'd damn well stay out of this. <laughs> or what? Or I'll give you a big, fat fist sandwich. Smash your nose to smithereens. Before or after I cut your balls off and stuff them down your throat. Time to go, Charlie boy. Not so brave now, are you? You okay? I'm gonna just make sure he leaves. I'll be right back. Breaking up. You're breaking up. Listen, listen, listen to me. Stop your pathetic sniffling and listen. I don't care how hard it is. Get me that money or it's all over. He needs money. Why? Business is booming. Plus, he drives a hundred grand car. Or he did, until he wrote it off. Maybe he just gets off on the power, uses it to ensnare women and control their every move. Or it's greed. Pure and simple. He says he wants to go into business with me. Needs an investor. Wants to rip you off, more like. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go back to the salon. I'm going to keep stringing him along until we get the proof that we need. I could go undercover. Gaz offered me a free Thai massage. Hey. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey. Roy. Let's get you on that table, shall we? I've got some fabulous oils with your name on them, actually, so... Oh, no. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> okay, come on through. Mind how you go there. I like those trainers. My nan's got a pair. The mud pack is straight from the Dead Sea, but you're not dead yet, so that's good, isn't it? Oh, I'm just gonna make this a bit tighter. See, it's supposed to help with wrinkles, but I think you might have left it too late. Mm. That's a busy little fingernail you've got going on there. Toxic jade. Gorgeous, aren't they? We've got promotion on neons at the moment, but... neons don't complement the ageing hands, so if I was you, I'd go for, like, a nude with a pearlescent shimmer or something like the Queen. Thanks, Josie. 
Oh, can I get you anything? Like a water, green tea, smashed avocado. No, thank you. Okay. Do you think all this is really necessary? Your complexion will be more radiant, trust me. Josie thinks I'm beyond restoration. A lack of tact masks a heart of gold. Mm, which she clearly adores you. It's just a crush. Mm. Like she could ever compete with you, Agatha. Well, I'm really not that special, Johnny. Oh, been thinking about you all day. Can't concentrate. Are you okay? Oh, sorry. I'll be right back. So then? No. Still treat me like a little bitch. Ow! As soon as I qualify, I'm out of here. <sighs> what was that? Sounds suspiciously like a happy ending. You. And Josie will do anything for a big tip. That bloke's not the only thing she's creaming off. Yeah. Cash has been disappearing from the office, and Johnny keeps accusing me, but I know it's her. That didn't sound very happy. Salon JS, Evesham High Street. Yeah, thanks. Police and ambulance are on their way. What are you doing? I found a letter from Lisa Friendly and Johnny's man band begging him to stop blackmailing her. <gasps> Where are you going? To his house. His address was on the envelope. To do what exactly? I think that all of Johnny's women secrets, and that was why he chose them. And if I don't destroy the evidence, their lives are going to be ruined. But what if it was murder? One of Johnny's women could be the killer. Listen, you, just go and stall the police for as long as you can. Aggie! You've got a green face. Everybody stay where they are. This is now officially a crime scene. You think it's murder? I cannot reveal anything until the escalated working practices have been escalated. And the decision-making systems for the newly categorised complex investigation have been implemented. He's been on a course. Golf or...? Nobody is permitted to leave until all threat, risk and vulnerability factors have been assessed including any potential link to organised crime and terrorism. Terrorism? Oh, my God. No need to panic. What DCI Wilkes means is we'll have to take a statement before we can let you leave. Well, we're not all here. Someone's done a runner. Who? Mrs Agatha Raisin. Joy right in my arse.
which supermarkets the suit from? Sir Agatha vanished into thin air without a word to her best mate. I had a deceased hairdresser to deal with. It's all a bit of a blur. Under subsection 2 of the 1911 Perjury Act, I could arrest you on suspicion of telling Paul Keys. Go on, then. But I swear to God, I've absolutely no idea where she is. Madonna do. smell. Roy, he's developed a severe problem with food order and he's finding it very difficult to shift. As you are no doubt aware, Johnny Shawpart was found dead at his salon earlier today. A death we're treating as suspicious under section 4, subsection 2B of a... Wait, hang on, I've lost a page. And you, Mrs. Raisin... Yes? Where was I? We have a witness who claims you absconded from the scene minutes after the said victim's demise. Give the suspect the earliest opportunity to explain why the offence took place. No, I didn't mean to read that bit. No. Where did you go? Well, I came home. I was in shock. And I... I didn't know what to do with myself. So you were nowhere near Mr Short Park's residence at any point today? No. So you know nothing about the fire at his home? No. We've got a forensic lead at the property. I'll need to speak to the FO. Why are you wearing a dressing gown? Bill, I simply felt the need for loungewear. I was feeling a little stressed. Do you have a problem with that? I'm perfectly fine now. I can just... Experience tells me you're more involved in this than you're letting on. All right, OK. So is this the bit where you tell me not to get involved in detecting, is it? No, actually. I need your help. 
Wilkes regurgitating the rule book is getting us nowhere. You share what you know. I'll do the same. Then maybe we can solve this case together. Oh, Bill! I don't... I don't know anything. This isn't a game, Agatha. They reckon Johnny was poisoned. And not just any old poison. His symptoms indicate ricin, which was injected into vitamins found at the scene. Oh, my God. Yeah. And according to witness statements, you were with him the day before he died, in the salon when he died, and then you do a run. <sighs> if you're not the murderer, why take such a close interest in Johnny Shawpart? He was blackmailing some of his clients. Why not come to us first? Because I was trying to stop him before anybody else got hurt. Some of his victims had far too much to lose. Johnny's murder means his victims are now suspects. Mrs. Raisin. <sighs> it was arson. Started by an accelerant chemical substance as yet unknown. Well, any witnesses? I'm not authorised to reveal classified information to my prime suspect. You're not supposed to tell her she's your prime suspect, sir. Mrs. Raisin was familiar with the victim. Maybe she can shed some light on the footage we received. This individual was seen entering the property from a neighbor's security camera. Black tail face, black hooded Mac. Nothing whatsoever to identify them. Apart from the distinctive shiny trainers with red laces, sir. Apart from that. So, do you recognise this person, Mrs. Raisin? No. This isn't over, Mrs. Raisin. Not by a long shot. Everything all right, Agatha? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm. I'm. The new neighbourhood watch warden. You? Yes. Uh, they, they were just bringing me some information packs. So there was nothing to identify our friendly neighbourhood fire start? Mm -mm. Nothing. Roy, what if they think it's me? The forensics are there at Johnny's house right now, mooching around. Do they know how he died? Yes. The killer injected his vitamins with ricin. Ricin? Ricin. Ricin is one of the most poisonous substances on Earth. It is derived from the seeds of the castor, castor oil, oil plant. plant. I mean... We need to find out who has one, and if so, whether there's any connections with Johnny. Oh. I told Deirdre Downey that I was made neighbourhood watch warden. So that gives us carte blanche to go rooting around in people's herbaceous borders. Right, come on, let's get fracking. Oh, no, we can't. We've got the costume fitting with Gemma, and I'm stage manager now. But I can do some subtle asking around. What, like, nice weather we're having? Do you have a castor oil planned? Probably not like that, but Sarah knows everything about everyone, so let's just ask her. Right, come on, we have a plan. OK. Now, try them on in the toilet, and then come and see Eve, who's kindly joined us as hair and beauty consultant. We're going full-on glamour. <laughs> oh, uh, ladies, there have been reports that Peeping George is in the vicinity, so no undressing near any of the windows. That's a shame. You, you have to call Agatha James. Well, she keeps asking if I know where you are, and you know how much I hate lying. These are lush, Mrs B. Where'd you get them from? Found a catalogue in Bernard Boggle's bedside cabinet. He's a dark horse. You're not wrong. He's hung like an Arab stallion. Who is? Oh, you don't want to know. I do, please. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Very dominatrix. You'll terrify the blokes in that. If they can't handle it, tough. We are not pandering to any of them anymore. Yeah. And we've got you to thank for that, Mrs. Raisin. Thanks, Mrs. Raisin. I've got some nipple tassels that look magnificent on you, Mrs. Benson. Now, where are they, my dear? Come on, then, Boggler. She's had a bit of a personality transplant, hasn't she? Since she kicked her old man out, she's never used to thank anyone for anything. Well, single lady life clearly suits her. Can you give me a hand, Gemma, if it's not too much trouble? Yeah, sure. Oh, I feel like such a fraud. Why? 
everyone thanking me for their newfound emancipation. First sniff of male attention, and I nearly sniffed him. Hmm, you didn't succumb. Well, only because I realised he was a blackmailer and I was going to be his next victim. Otherwise, I would have been right in there. So you stopped missing James, then? No. This is because I miss him. Well, he'll be back, I'm sure of it. But do you think he's going to be coming back to me? Oh. Listen to me. More of a sap than Lisa Friendly mooning over a man who, quite frankly, does not deserve me. I haven't heard from Lisa in a while. I've been calling her, but... Oh, I know that face. Is she in trouble? She could be. Johnny was blackmailing her. I think her husband must have found out and someone took a pop at Johnny a couple of days before he died. Rob Friendly may be an unreconstructed Neanderthal, but he's not a murderer. Yeah, well, I just need to find out, make sure she's okay. Do you want me to come with you? Oh, no, it's okay. Oh, but you could help me. Do you know of anyone in Cartley that's got a castor oil plant? Not off the top of my head. But I can snoop around. I just wanted to check you were okay. Sarah Bloxby said she'd been trying to reach you. Rob doesn't want me involved. Says it's degrading. Sorry. I need to talk to you about Johnny. Did Rob know about this? So he wasn't the one who attacked Johnny? If Rob knew I was cheating, it wouldn't be Johnny he'd hurt. Mum gave me some money when she sold her house. Twelve thousand pound. Rob knew nothing about it. it uh, Mum didn't trust him. But you told Johnny. Thought he loved me. He was so kind, caring. He told me I was beautiful. And then he went cold on you. Couldn't understand it. So I started following him. I saw him with that old front Maggie. <laughs> what did she have that I didn't? Well, more money, probably. I bombarded him with texts telling him how much I loved him. And he threatened to show them to Rob. I gave him half my mum's money in cash <laughs> and he deleted the text in front of me, but he kept copies and demanded more money. I... Oh, when I heard he was dead, I thought I'd escaped from hell. Did you see him with anyone else? Well, that Josie was always hanging around, but I was so jealous. Lisa! Lisa! <sighs> You'll have to go out the park. Hurry. None of this can ever come out, Agatha. Promise me, I'd rather die. I won't let anything happen, I swear. So that means that Johnny was blackmailing Deirdre Dowry and she was poisoning him to prevent anyone from finding out about the affair. Well, it fits the pattern. So that means that Johnny actually... Did the deed oh. with Deirdre. It just mm. seems a bit of a stretch, don't you think? Oh, Johnny would do anything for money. Even Deirdre Dowry. And guess which pharmacy supplied his vitamins? <gasps> Deirdre Dowry again! Oh, you are good at this, Lark. I know. We still need to make sure that this plant is what we think it is. Mrs Boggle. She's quite the boss nest. I'll get her a cutting. Oh, she's stuck, she's stuck. Come to mummy. I've got treacles. What on earth it is going? On. Neighbourhood watch. We, uh, thought we saw an intruder. Just a false alarm. Really? But I am going to have to check out your internal security. If that's OK. No, it's not OK. Now, get on my property before I call the police. 
You go to Mrs. Bogger. I'm not leaving you. Listen, I'm fine. I can handle it. Go. He's only following his instincts. Just like you were with Johnny Shaw part. I know that you were the one that supplied the vitamins that killed him. Not here. Come inside. My late husband, Keith, he did a big plumbing job for Johnny when he first moved to the area. He was a master plumber. Of course he was. Keith always wanted me to have the best of everything. Couldn't always afford it, though. What's this got to do with Johnny? Keith installed a whole heating system. Kitchen, three bathrooms, and all the cash. He didn't declare it. I had no idea. But Johnny did. He told me that if I didn't give him £10,000, that he would tell the HMRC they'd be forced to investigate and it could ruin me. So you thought you had to do something? I'm not a murderer, Mrs Rayson. <coughs> the police, however, may conclude differently. I need to do some investigating of my own. Well, if you find anything you may find helpful, then you, you may would like... think you're the new Miss Marple. I have an IQ of 158 and a shrewd and inquiring mind. I'll solve this puzzle far more efficiently on my own. Now, if you don't mind. Well, if you change your mind, call me. You're scented, I'm afraid. All the village dogs will be after you now. Just like all the village men seem to be. Reggie, come on. I think you owe me an explanation. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, right. Uh, where to start? Um, it's complicated. I risked life, limb, and testicles for your little role play. It won't happen again, Charles. But I loved playing detective with you in Cyprus, and, and, that wasn't all I loved. Charles. But listen, look, you're, we're, we're good together. Agatha! Go! <sighs> Goodbye! Do you believe Deirdre Darry's denial? I'm not sure. She definitely has motive, and she's a pharmacist. She wouldn't know how to extract ricin. If we could prove that the seeds came from her castor oil plant. We can't. Oh, sorry. Hello. Uh, According to Mrs. Boggle, it's the Fatsia japonica, otherwise known as the fake castor oil plant. Same leaves, no poisonous seeds. Oh, seriously? So you mean all that creeping about in bushes and getting pissed on was for nothing? Let's rewind to the beginning. First time you went to the salon, you said you heard a couple fighting. I did. Did we ever find out who they were? We didn't. Johnny said it was warring neighbours, but I think that voice could have been his. We need to see if they actually exist. Well, I can do that. Oh, I forgot to say, I think we found Maggie. Oh. Hello? Maggie? Just like I want to now. Oh, Fernando, I wish I could tell you to stop, but I can't. I really... I'd never experienced true romance before. Johnny made me feel so wanted. Unlike your husband. It was as if one of my favourite characters had come to life. Then he started to refuse my calls. I couldn't get an appointment. So I sent letters expressing my passion. Graphic at times. And finally, he agreed to meet me in the park. Johnny knew I'd been saving for a new life. Nearly £10,000. He threatened to tell my husband about us and 
my plans to leave if I didn't hand over the money in 24 hours. I thought he was bluffing. The Johnny I knew would never betray me like that. But this wasn't one of your romantic novels. When I failed to meet the deadline, he dropped the letters at Pete's work. The same day that Johnny got... Smashed on the nose. Punched. Pete can snap if he's pushed too far. But is he capable of murder? Not with poison. If he'd wanted to kill Johnny, he'd have done it with his bare hands. Well, thank you for that, Sarah. So, Johnny was lying about the neighbours. That building has not been occupied for months. So, Mr. Raging was Johnny. Hmm? Who was he talking to? How many other women were there? Lisa and Maggie both had motive. Yes, but no actual evidence to connect them to the murder. And I think they were both still in love with him. Which Deirdre Darry never was, but she supplied the vitamins and had the technical know-how to pull it off. She was just desperate to protect her nest egg and her reputation. She'll still be at work. We could take a little look around. <gasps> that doesn't sound entirely legal. Since when has that bothered you? Good afternoon, Russell. Taking any chances this time with that dog? I don't think that Reggie's in. There's no barking. <gasps> oh, my God. Roy. No sign of a break-in, sir. And there are two cups on the table. Well, that sounds like she must have known her killer. Did you see anyone, Mrs. Raisin? No. Then why should I believe you? Your car was caught on CCTV less than a mile from Mr. Shawpark's house on the day of the fire. And you said you'd been nowhere near it. Yes. I had run out of milk. The village shop sells milk. Yes, it does. But it doesn't sell goat's milk. I have an allergy. They need your permission to move the body, sir. I am finished with you. You're going to tell me everything you know. And did you? Of course not. I know what you're thinking. Maggie and Lisa have gone through quite enough without Wilkes poking his big clumsy oar in. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking of how very little we know about Johnny's life before he came here. You think his escape to the country store is a cover? Go to Bristol. See what you can find out. Well, the hairdressing world's quite small. Maybe Gaz knows something. Why don't you make another appointment? Well, the salon's closed. Oh, fine. He's taken it over and kept all the staff, even Josie. Now, Josie's one of Johnny's fan club that seems to have gone under our radar. I mean, what do we actually know about her? Gaz said she was stealing cash from the business. What if Johnny found out? Well, if Josie's attracted to no good serial philanderers, maybe we should ask Charles Gray. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not pander to his giant ego. You didn't mind pandering to his giant ego in Cyprus. Hello, Bristol. No comment. Oh, and there was I thinking that you'd change your mind. A little rumpy pumpy for old time's sake. Oh, Charles, I am trying to erase that chapter from my memory. No, I need you to go undercover. I'll go under your covers any time. <sighs> Not mine. Somebody else's. Go on. I need you to take a pretty perfect-breasted 20-something to dinner. At my expense. Mm. To do what? I need you to use your suave, debonair charm to suss out her relationship with Johnny Shawpart. Oh, and, uh, Charles, this isn't an actual date. So no actual shagging. Of course not. I'm a professional. I mean, hair by JN for the salon in Bristol. Mm. Three months waiting list, features in national magazines. To make into each I mm. just... bet you couldn't believe your luck. Mm -hmm. There you go, I guess. Uh, thank you. Mm. What do they say? Let me your heroes. You're happy now here, though, are you? With Eve? Oh, yeah. She's been totally amazed, so I don't know what I'd have done without her. <laughs> but I am thinking of going into dog grooming. Yeah, more money, less hassle. Dogs are so much nicer than people. Yeah, not all of them.
me drink this much. You're a terrible influence. <laughs> well, I've been told that before. Mm. Cheers. My mum told me to stay away from men like you. But I reckon you're more like a George Clooney type than a dirty old perv, so... <sighs> you know, when I saw you through the window of that salon, I mm. thought... I cannot walk past without meeting this vision of loveliness. Oh, I do have that effect on people. <laughs> Must be traumatic, though. Working somewhere, a man you were so close to died. He wasn't as nice as everyone thought. But he had this aura about him that just sucked you in. It sucked my mum in, that's for sure. Your mum? Yeah, so I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, the night is still young. Mm -hmm. More wine? Uh, sorry, white wine gives me terrible gas. <sighs> You're not even supposed to have that on. I thought Roy might have found something in Bristol. You need to forget about the investigation. Focus on getting better. Uh, the hospital told me it was just concussion. Oh, damn it. Jess and I have got a meeting with the parish council about the roof. Well, I'll be fine. You can go. Well, if you promise me to take it easy while I'm away. I promise. Mm. Who's that? Charles Freith. Well, perfect. He can babysit me while you've gone. But what did he actually do? Johnny blackmailed Josie's mum into believing that her husband was having an affair. They had revenge sex. He filmed it. And he blackmailed her. Josie got the job as receptionist with the express intention of ripping Johnny off to the tune of £7,000. The money that he'd taken from her mother. Exactly. Josie knew that Johnny wouldn't be interested in her because she wasn't loaded. Mm. But she was quite interested in me last night. Oh, Charles, you didn't. She likened me to George Clooney. It seemed rude not to. Anyway, I got the information you wanted. I think I deserve a gold star. Silver star, taking into account your unorthodox methods. Well, I'd better be going, or else Sarah will have my guts for garters for overtiring you when she returns. Call me if you need me. Okay. Agatha. I thought you want to see these. Your brake lines were deliberately cut. Some sort of bright green paint. I'm not sure what it is yet. <sighs> Toxic Jade. <sighs> it was juicy. Witnesses heard you arguing with Johnny on the morning of his death. You were stealing from him stock, cash. He was going to call the police, but you couldn't let that happen. It wasn't like that. We've been going through the CCTV from the security cameras in the salon. Didn't know you had a twin sister. I only took what Yo does. Johnny Shawpart destroyed my family. So you murdered him? Just as you tried to murder Mrs. Agatha Raisin by cutting her brake lines. No! Look, I swear to God, OK, I took some cash. I had nothing to do with any stock going missing or Ms. Raisin's brakes. There you are. You're supposed to be in bed. I had to get out for a bit. Yeah, Sarah said you'd been a terrible patient. Oh, she'd give Nurse Ratchet a run for her money. So how was Bristol? The plot thickens. Hair by JN opened in 2012. The opening was a big deal. It was featured in all the national magazines. The mayor was there, local celebs. The redhead is Natalie, Johnny's first wife. She looks a bit long in the tooth, even for Johnny. Not her, the one with the tattoo cutting the ribbon. Three years later, it burnt to the ground. Johnny and Natalie split up soon after the fire. Guy in the corner shop reckons it was an insurance job, but it was never proved. Well, we need to do a bit more digging. I'll try my PR contacts in Bristol. So if it was in national magazines, I'll go home, find out which ones, and I will call the editors. I'll come with you. No, you finish your manly pint. It's just a pint. Make those calls. Somebody must know something.
chains. <laughs> Charles! What are you doing here? I say, do put that down, Agatha. I've got us a nice bottle of Coke de Bone. You should know better, Agatha. Underneath a flower pot is the first place any jobbing burglar would look for a spare key. I thought you were an axe murderer. You'd run out of kindling. Mm. Charles, why are you even here? It's Josie. She's stalking me. She wants to move into the manor. And she's not exactly broodmare material. So, I needed a place to hide out while she gets the message. Mm. Well, still doesn't explain why you're naked and in my dressing gown. I fancied a bath. Oh, don't look at me like that, Agatha. It's really your fault, you know. I didn't tell you to shine you, did I? Oh, hey. Uh, any news? Uh, Josie took the afternoon off to prepare for her date with you, Sir Charles. She was nowhere near your car that afternoon. So... It was someone else with green neon diamond encrusted nails then. It was from a range at the salon. Freely accessible to staff and clients. Oh, do you know, come on Sir? in. Just don't bother knocking, roll on up, whatever. Sir Charles? I like to get in touch with my feminine side from time to time, Inspector. You should try it. Charles, you just go upstairs and get dressed. A forensics report back from the fire. All my training has paid off. The chemical used to start the fire was peroxide related. Peroxide used specifically in hairdressing salons? Well, how do you know? I did an FBI module in advanced barcode recognition. But you can barely send a text. All right. It was then Detective Constable Wong. The barcode was recovered from a charred can. I put it through a digital tracing program and discovered it was purchased by Johnny Shawpart, as were the scissors that killed Deirdre Dandry. Darry, Deirdre, Deirdre Darry. Darry, Darry. So, our thief was most likely our killer. Hmm. I... You know what? I think you might be onto something. Well done, sir. Yeah. I reckon I could still be an FBI agent. Hmm? Hi. Agatha, what about your head? This will help. Tried all my contacts in Bristol. Yes, please. No one knows any more than we do. Ah, uh, Sherlock Wilkes does. What? Oh, yes. He has been on a course. He's found out that the cause of the fire was peroxide stolen from Salmon JS. So, the thief is now our prime suspect. Roy, what is it? Gaz had a load of peroxide in his boot. Was that before the fire? Yeah, but there's no way it's Gaz. He's such a softie, it wouldn't hurt anyone. Johnny hated him. He had access to his vitamins to my car, to cut the brake lines, to the peroxide. He had means, motive, and an opportunity. Well, when you put it like that... So maybe Gaz isn't quite as innocent as he'd like us to believe. some work on the rebranding. Builders start tomorrow. I just wanted my hair to look its best for the show. I mean, you sound very busy, so with gases around? Come in. I'll see what I can do. Right. This should sort your ends out. Ongoing, I recommend a hot wrap with coconut oil. OK. Uh... So where's Gaz? Upstairs. Curtains drawn. Won't talk to anyone. Why? He's beside himself. You know, the police have been sniffing around. No. They think he could be the murderer. I know. Seems ridiculous. He's such a sweetheart. But what if he just lost it? I mean, Johnny could be so cruel. Oh, Johnny was hard on him. That's an understatement. The things he told me. Really? But, but I mean, murder? Do you think that Gaz is capable? 
The police want me to make a statement. Gaz begged me to lie to them, to corroborate what he told them. Why would he do that if he wasn't guilty? So what are you going to do? Much as I love him, I'm not prepared to perjure myself. Right, we'll leave this on for 20 minutes. Oh, there's my builder. He wants to go through a couple of things. Help yourself to magazines. He checked his OK. I'll go after him. Gas! 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 Slow down! I'll meet you at 8 30s! Sarah, I found the plan. Gas! 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 I wonder where you've got to. I was looking for a toilet. Gas made a quick exit then, poor boy. I just remembered that I have a concert rehearsal. I better leave. Just let me wash that out. It won't take a sec. Yes, yes, let's do that. Gas! Waiting! Gas! Gas! It's time to stop now. Just tip your head back, Agatha. That's it. It shouldn't take long. Let me know if this is too hot. Oh. Yeah. I feel as if I've seen that tattoo somewhere before. In a photograph. Of Johnny's ex-wife. You're Natalie. I nicked stuff. Okay, I admit it. So who did you sell it to? I wasn't like that. Eve was struggling to stay afloat, so she asked me to take stock from Johnny's just to tide her over. And he could afford it. What exactly? Shampoo, scissors, and peroxide. So the peroxide I saw in your boot that ended up at Eve's. I was just helping her out. And the plant? What are you talking about? The one in your room. That was in Eve's old office, and when she moved, she. Insisted I have it to brighten up my room. Very expensive taste. Racked up loads of debt. Fire seemed like the only way out. When the insurance company became suspicious, Johnny changed tack, told the police that I'd started the fire, and they believed him. So I reinvented myself. Oh. I had savings Johnny knew nothing about. Enough for a new identity and to put a deposit on the Evesham salon. But then... Johnny turned up, threatened to blow my cover. Couldn't bear that I made it without him. I was happy for the first time in my life. I wasn't about to let him ruin it. I pretended I wanted a reconciliation, and he was vain enough to believe me. Spent a few nights at his house, enough time for me to get a key cut and to doctor his precious vitamins with ricin. Oh! I trained in organic beauty therapy. I knew about distilling compounds from plant extracts, injected them into his pills. I understand how you would want revenge, but... 
Why did you want to kill him? They destroyed the person I used to be. I wasn't about to let him destroy Eve, too. Police won't be here for ten minutes. Let's try around the back. I'd been there, started the fire using peroxide gas and nick from Johnny. Oh, the delicious irony. And Mrs. Darry? The stress was getting to me. I couldn't sleep. My GP prescribed temazepam. Mrs. Darry had to check my medical history. My old notes were attached to the new ones under a different name. <gasps> Natalie Shaw part. And she put two and two together. Then I heard you at the salon asking questions about hair by JN. <gasps> Sorry, it was you that cut my brake lines. Only to scare you off, but you just couldn't leave it. Oh, ooh, you want to go looking your best. <laughs> <sighs> I'm rubbish at climbing. Well, I'm scared of heights. I'm very brave. Oh, it shouldn't take long. You thought like a torch. <sighs> <sighs> But you wouldn't listen. And isn't that just like you, Agatha? Never taking no for an answer. A brilliant idea, Agatha. Everyone is loving it. Well, everyone who's here. Are you really sure you're up to it? Tonight is about celebrating the fabulous women that we are. Loud, proud, and confident. All the qualities that Johnny Shaw Park did his best to undermine. And I am going to enjoy every minute of it. I don't care if you have got a ticket, beeping George. It doesn't include goosing. Now get out! Oh, get out! Get out! Get that? Get that? Turns out, Rob put the house in my name for tax purposes. Telling him to leave was the best decision of my life. Wouldn't have had the courage without you, Rob. Well done, Agatha. One step ahead of the plot once again. Not that hard around here. 
may I say, how remarkably alluring you're looking this evening. I'm not sleeping with you, Charles. <sighs> I said it in Cyprus, and I say it again. You're too good for him. Everybody ready? Ladies, it's showtime. <laughs>